Oh, hey, hey, hey. I had to put some butter on my hands because I was washing them dishes, cooking some dinner, steak and red potatoes and salad. And ooh, I'm hungry too. It's bad to cook when you're hungry. Okay, I'm coming when the food may be, so I just had to get those hands buttered up. I don't want them looking so ashy <laughs> on the camera. Ooh, don't look good. I want y'all talking about my hands. Like, ooh, she could have put some lotion or something on her hands. <laughs> anyway, I'm so glad you are here and you have decided to tune in to Get Your Life Back to Chill podcast. And let me tell you, today we have a biggie because a lot of people ask this question. How do I know God is calling me to either greater or to a particular purpose, calling, like ministry or something, or just, again, a purpose or ministry, either way? How do I know God is calling me? How do I know God is, 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 is preparing me or leading me in a certain direction? I don't want to talk about that today. So I'm going to talk about 10 signs that God is calling you, okay? And so, first of all, you'll learn to recognize, I believe that these 10 strategies or these 10 signs is going to help you recognize God's divine calling on your life for show, okay? So, you'll be able to for show, for show, <laughs> recognize the sign. Now, understand that it can sometimes be scary to be called to a divine work, it can be challenging. Sometimes it causes you to step outside of your comfort zone, doing something new um, because accountability comes with it, responsibility comes with it, and you're like, because eh, sometimes you don't trust yourself. Let's see. I need to do a part two of this video because there's things you can put in place to help you uh, stay accountable and committed to your journey. And it can also be excited to be called. It can be very exciting. And so I don't want you to, you know, negate that part. So number one, how do you know when God is calling you to do greater or greater purpose? Let's talk about it. Um, sometimes you get this nonstop, undeniable nudge. You feel or like an inner urge or conviction that you are meant to do something big and great. That's how I felt. I felt like there was greatness on the inside of me, and it was something that God wanted me to do. And it just wrestled in my spirit. It would That feeling would not go away. That belief would not go away. And other people saw it too, and I'm going to get into that as well, you know, talking about confirmation. But that feeling, that nudge, it was pushing me to do that, that there's something that God wanted me to do. And it's almost like I felt the hand of God pushing me gently in my back, like that encouraging feel like, okay, go ahead. That's what I was feeling. The Father directed me towards something. Um, and so, again, you get this strong conviction. That feeling don't go away. It's compelling you, and it gets stronger and stronger. And it compels you to decide that you need to explore what this is. And with that, it's like receiving an impression to do something, an impression from the, from the Lord. You begin hearing God even more, and God will speak to you in various ways. But that's one of the ways. It's like through impression, a feeling, or urge to do something. Number two, you experience a supernatural endowment of power. When you perform like a particular task or you start to operate, something that you do, a movement, or it could be laying on a hands. It could be prophetic. It could be a word of knowledge that God gives you. It can be through intercessory prayer. Or maybe you always find yourself preaching and teaching on a particular issue or matter, or you feel led to do some kind of outreach ministry or connect with a certain people. And again, it won't leave you. That's like a, 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 a I'm going to talk about that burden that God gives you, a good burden to do a particular thing. Number three, you experience this unexplained passion, enthusiasm that comes over you. It's like a joy. It ignites you from the inside. And it's like when you do it, for example, when I start preaching or when I feel a word, I say, coming, right? Because it's not something you plan. See, normally when you're anointed in a certain area, 
It's easy for you to do it because you have an anointing to do it. With somebody else who's not gifted or called or anointed in that area, they may have to work at it or do a whole bunch of extra stuff to come up with it. But with you, it's almost like you impregnate impregnated with it. That's the best way I can describe it. It's something that just flows out of you. You can't even explain it, right? It's a passion, it's enthusiasm, but it's the it's this uh, anointing. This is it just flows freely out of you, and so that's the difference between a gifting. Now you can develop gifts, but it's a gift. It was given to you. You didn't make it happen. Now you can again, you can enhance the gift, you can strengthen, and you can grow. But it came to you. And so spiritual gifts come from the Lord. You can't make them come. You can believe for God to give them to you and pray, God, fill me. I receive your gift, but you can't make it happen. It's given to you. And the Holy Spirit, the Bible, I'm sorry, the word of God talks about the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit gives gifts to whom he will and pleases. He, because he is the Spirit of God. He gives gifts to whom he will and pleases. And so know that you can make these things happen. But you can feel that energy that comes over you is a natural passion, and it brings some sense of fulfillment and joy when you operate in this, whatever that gifting is, whatever direction you feel yourself moving at times. It's almost like you can't stop yourself. Like I would get me say sometimes when I preach, I get so excited, it just flow out of me. And, you know, you hear people say, oh, my God, I feel my help coming on. It's like this extra anointing of power that flows, and you can't, it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. Um, number four, recognizing or seeing yourself operating in this particular office or position or gifting or purpose. Because, you know, God could use you use you in the secular world as well as within the body of Christ, okay? And most of the time, a lot of times, you can see the consistency of that calling. Because no matter where you are, you can feel it on you and tugging on you in the marketplace in the church, it won't go away. It's with you at all times. There's just a time and season and a place to operate in certain areas and gifting. But then a lot of times you can be endowed with a supernatural anointing to even do perform your secular, your work, your job, right? Like people can have the gift of teaching. We can all learn to teach, but some of us are gifted at teaching. We have a way of reaching people. Now, we all can learn um, a certain way to break things down. We can learn skills to connect with people and draw people's attention. There are ways you can teach one to teach people to uh, teach other people. But when you have a gift to teach, you don't have to try as hard. It just, again, it flows. And you constantly get different sometimes revelation and things that drop on you while you're teaching, and God will give you um, examples. We can learn how to give examples, right? We learn that, you learn that in school. You learn that when you go, to, uh, I guess, to study teaching as well. You learn how to come up with pericopes and stories that people can relate to, right? We all can do that, but then there's a supernatural anointing that can come over you when you teach that. It just come over you. You know what I'm saying? It, it just flows, and it just keeps coming. And it's almost like you can't stop it. And it's like pictures, images, it's come, right? It's that thing that you can't explain. That's when you know it's like a gifting to anoint. Like I can't explain it. It just comes on me. It drops in my spirit and I spit it out. And that's when we, it won't leave you, right? And sometimes operating in a particular position or spiritual gifting or even in a mission, um, you feel it. You recognize it because it happens all the time. You're like, okay, every time I do this thing, I keep feeling this feeling. And a lot of times you can also recognize that calling in your dreams and in your vision. I tell you, it won't leave you. It stays with you. Number five, sanctification and empowerment. God will set you aside. His word even tells us to sanctify ourselves, but his word also tells us that, you know, he shows how he sanctified us. He said, come out from among them and be separate. But there's a time that God will separate you because he's doing a work in you and he needs you to, he needs your undivided attention. He, he don't need you to be distracted. And a lot of times we can be distracted. So he will begin to separate you from the crowd 
and those who are carnal minded because they don't understand the spiritual things of God. The word tells us that. Light can't, darkness can't comprehend light, the Bible tells us. You know, when you just read, study the book of Corinthians 1 and 2, it talks about the gifts, the administration, the different administration of the gifts and how they operate and uh, have a distinctive uh, flow and movement. But it talks about how um, light can't comprehend the dark. I mean, dark can't comprehend the light. The understanding is not there unless you have that supernatural understanding. That God, God, oh well, God will give you revelation and a supernatural knowledge of something, then the understanding will come. But then you also have to be open to God, okay, for Him to even flow through you. So that that happens a lot during sanctification. He sanctify you. He set you apart, set you aside, so he you can be attuned to Him. And be able to hear him and know exactly how God is moving through you. He will download things into your spirit. You will get clarity and everything. So doing that sanctification, you're spending time in prayer. But he's empowering you through the word, through his power, and, and whatever he wants to do to you in that moment. So when he starts using you even more, you'll be you'll be able to grow more. And you will also, what's the word I'm looking for? Something that was coming to me. You will flow more in your gifting. It won't come to me. It'll come back to me. But it happens when you're spending that time with God. And so you can't miss that part. That is very crucial to your growth, to your growth and growing in that purpose and in your calling. Number six, recurring themes and messages. I talk about this a lot. Some of you guys who follow me have heard me say this. There's like a theme that seems to follow you. No matter where you go, it is on you. People see it. There's messages. You notice recurring themes. You notice these signs in your daily life that point you toward a specific direction. These can happen through encounters with people, um, interesting conversations you start to have. You start meeting peculiar people. You start meeting people who flow in the same gifting and calling that God called you to. Oh, my God, it's like he assigned them to your life for a reason because he has to grow and nurture you in that thing. And he does it on purpose. It's not by happenstance. You may think it's like a, a regular co coincidence. So, no, not with God. There is none. It seemingly appears to be a coincidence, but also through dreams and preachment and visions, right? So, number seven, divine opportunities start to happen. Divine doors will begin to open up. It's like God orchestrate these situations and, and open up these doors um, that you could not have ever open up yourself. God is doing it. He gives you this divine favor. He, he creates divine favorable circumstances to happen. You end up meeting the right people at the right time. You, you stumble into uh, an opportunity. Um, God orchestrates this. Or you receive resources that align with the path you were called to pursue and walk after. Some of you know what I'm talking about already because you have already experienced this. Number eight, I'm giving you 10 signs. Number eight, you feel a passion, a burden that I talked about earlier, or a desire to speak to a particular dilemma, a discontent that you have with the norm. You feel a shiver. You feel like a, a quickening to intervene in the midst of confusion, or that when there's a lack of understanding, you feel like God is leading you to give understanding, to give life. You feel that growing sense of dissatisfaction and there's a restlessness. I used to feel that all the time of, about a particular thing or when God is giving me a particular message to speak. It won't leave me until I speak it. For me, it used to sit on my chest. I used to feel this heaviness sitting right here. And until I move and do what God called me to do, it won't leave. And then once I do it, it leaves. Just like an innate propensity to move um, with the spirit of God that won't leave you until you complete that assignment. Interesting. Number nine, we're coming down to the last one. When you spend time in prayer, well, first of all, you receive confirmation of your calling from witnesses. It could be from other people through prayer and through reflection. Through, through reflection. I know I'm going fast. Because I'm excited about this one because I have experienced all of these things. Oh, my God. And more. 
But when you spend time in prayer, meditation, or reflection, and or reflection, you receive clarity and confirmation about your calling, your purpose. And you might even feel a deep sense of peace that comes over you when, you when you see yourself operating it and you feel it. You get this assurance that God gives you. It's like you know that you know that you know that you know. Nobody can convince you otherwise. You have made your calling and election sure. As the Bible says, make your calling and election sure. And these things will help you do that. These steps, these signs, these strategies. Because <laughs> um, God is strategic in the way he does things. You also may feel a, a, a deep um, sense of peace. I said that, right? Assurance, a direction. And that direction reinforces your sense of purpose. It's like, okay, this is definitely what God wants me to do. Some kind of way, it reinforces that thing. Maybe you find yourself in, in multiple similar occurrences or situations or, or ways that God is moving you over and over again. It reinforces that purpose of God on your life. And then God will lead you towards scripture to confirm and affirm. Also in that those scriptures are relative to your call. Because I can think of certain people that God wanted me to pay attention to in a particular season. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, maybe something I had, maybe I had a similar dilemma and God wanted me to see. Just like when he, uh, one time I was focused on Jeremiah because I felt like God was always giving me words of doom and gloom or, or a warning to people, you know, because I started moving in a prophetic. And I'm like, why did it be me? <laughs> How many of you guys are saying that? Why me? Why I got to be the, the the bearer of this kind of news, right? Uh, but it's to love us, right? We understand. When we understand um, God, the gifts and how why God give us these gifts, it's to build each other up. It's to edify each other. And it's from a place of love. So thank God for warnings because they come to protect you and let you know ahead of time so that you can reposition and do what God has called, wants you to do in that season, right? Um so he will. He will lead you um, through his word, and he will give you examples in his word, okay? So you are not by yourself. Number 10, the last one. Positive impact and infect that you have on people. You notice your actions, words, or presence positively, how they impact and influence other people in meaningful ways. And people will come back and tell you. They will come back and tell you, and that gives you more confirmation and affirmation. You have a positive impact on people. People may express gratitude, encouragement, affirmation, which indicates that your work, whatever you're doing and saying, is making a big difference in people's lives. And so that is really it. I just hope if this resonates with somebody, let me know in the comment section. Let me know what signs you've seen, you've witnessed, you have experience in your own life that you need to maybe go back and pay attention to. It may be a time for you to seek further guidance through prayer, reading of God's word, the scripture, seeking counsel from leaders in the faith, trusted mentors, spiritual leaders, so you can embrace that greater purpose that God is calling you to because it's time for you to fulfill the call and walk that impactful journey with God's plan for your life. You need to do it. I'm telling you right now. So this may be the uh, in season for somebody who's feeling all of these things or who are starting to experience some of these things that I have named, these 10 different signs that God is calling you to greater, calling you to a particular purpose, to a particular office and ministry, position, or, or uh, to a movement, a mission. He wants you to operate in a particular way in the marketplace, at work. You have to do, you have to allow God, let's put it that way, allow God to do all that he has to do to do that work in you, right? Because he will perform it, okay? He will, He who has, the Bible says, he who has begun a good work inside of you will perform it into the day of Christ. But we have to allow God to do it because there's a lot of people who miss their calling and gifts, either for disobedience or different things that happen to them. But everybody has a, has a purpose. Everybody has a call to do something. But then there's these spiritual callings that come, especially as believers. And when we receive Christ, he calls us to a work. He does. What is he calling you to? What signs are you seeing? Let's talk about it. Okay, I'm done. I'm finished. Ah, thank you so much for tuning in. 
please, 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 please like and subscribe so you can help this channel uh, reach more people by you liking, subscribing, but mainly com commenting and watching the whole video. You know what lets YouTube know, hmm, people want to hear this message. We're going to push it out to more people. So that's how you help me to grow this channel, by you engaging. I need to hear your feedback, really, because it can open up more dialogue or more videos in the future. And then I can do more live videos so we can talk about it live in the moment, right? Let's make it happen, people. Thank you, wonderfully made people. I love you. Until next time, you be blessed. All right. Bye-bye.